All right, let's keep this short, right? We just gotta get the global XY stiffness matrix for the beam here. Um, it's going at a negative angle, so I mean, it doesn't change the process, but you'll see what happens, right? Um, the signs could be just tricky, but you'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, this is the goal right here. It's This is the stiffness matrices for these problems, um, stiffness matrix for these types of problems. Um, there's a lot of theory, again, I've mentioned in the other videos, but they use transformation matrices and uh, local displacement vectors and all that good stuff to finally uh, obtain this. But I guess uh, finding out how they got here doesn't really matter. All that matters, well, at least for you, right? It's uh, how to use it on the exam. So. The C right here is just cosine, the S is sine of the angle, obviously, right? Um, and that's pretty much it to so these problems. You just gotta, uh, this is what I like to do. So to start it off, if you watch the other videos, you already know, right? But start with the element, right? Let me just draw a little table. So for each element, in this case, we only have one. We're gonna get the theta of that angle, right? We're gonna get cosine of the angle we're gonna get sine we're gonna get cosine squared sine squared I'm gonna make this a little bit more out and finally we're gonna get cosine times sine now it's a lot of um, it's for each element right so in this case when you have one element it's this bar right here from one to two um, on the exam I'm pretty sure you're gonna have more but that's why I like to do the table because you will get confused if you don't do it this way. But well, at least I don't know. That was just for me, right? But point is, there's a lot of things to this table, but we're only concerned with C squared, S squared, and CS, right? Because that's all this matrix is. So, but we need all this stuff to kind of get there. So look, let me show you what I mean. So the angle is negative 30. It's always with respect to X. And in this case, right, it's going down 30 degrees. So that is negative 30 degrees and cosine of that angle is radical three over two we got sine is negative one half um this we kind of just know right um you should know that anything there's the axis right goes all the way down um anything in this region is positive x and then anything below the x is negative y so as long as you know you're 30, 60, 45 degrees for sine and cosine, you'll be all right. But you could always just use a calculator, right? Uh, square cosine, you will get three over four. Square sine, you will get one over four. And if you multiply them C times S, you will get negative radical three over four. And that's pretty much it. Again, we're only concerned with these three values right here. Uh, the rest is history, right? Um, K matrix, stiffness matrix will be, oh, one more thing, EA over L. So EA over L, that is 210 times four divided by three. Um, that's gonna be 280. So that's gonna be 280. Now, gigapascals is 10 to the nine, 10 to the negative four on, for area. So that means it's times 10 to the fifth. And that is Newton per meter, it's a stiffness, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and continue, right? So it's EAL, so we're gonna put 280 times 10 to the fifth, and that's gonna be, give ourselves some nice room. It's only four, it's a four by four, but you want to make sure you give yourself enough space. There we go. So we got U1, V1, U2, V2. And it's only two nodes, right? But now we're including X and Y components. So that's why you got U1, V1, X, Y. Um, plug in, right? C squared was 3 over 4. So we're going to have 3 fourth. Um, next one is CS, negative C squared, negative CS. So that is CS right here, negative radical three over four. Next one is negative C squared. That's negative three over four. Don't get confused with the signs, okay? This doesn't mean 
the negative is going to go away because you squared or whatever. We already got the values. Now this is just going to switch the sign of whatever it is here. So this was negative, it would have been a positive. Okay, just uh, make sure you catch that or don't get confused. So that's the first row. Next row is S squared, that is one fourth. Next row, next uh, column is negative CS. So that is, again, right, negative CS. It is already a negative, so it's gonna be a positive. Radical three over four, and finally negative one fourth. Uh, keep it going, right? Now we're here, C squared, that is positive three fourths. Probably did the matrix a little too weird, right? But whatever, doesn't matter. Um, CS, that is negative radical three over four. And finally, we have S squared, which is one fourth. And it's symmetrical, so it's pretty easy to do, right? Um, this negative radical three over four goes here. Uh, negative 3 over 4, right? Negative 3 over 4, and then radical 3 over 4. Next one, sort of going this way, it's radical 3 over 4, and then negative 1 fourth. Then negative radical 3 over 4. So that's the answer right there. Pretty straightforward. Um, just this one, be careful with the signs, but these problems, um, this one's not gonna come on the exam. Uh, he's gonna give you a, a real force is equal to kx, right? This is your k. You're gonna have a force matrix. You're gonna have a f1x, f2x. I'm sorry, you're gonna have a force in the x direction, force in the y. Honestly, I can't remember. So just watch the other videos that I make later, but I just know you have, a, compared to the older videos, it gets a little bit more complicated, but um, I guess it's just good to, kind of understand what you're doing. But yeah, that's the answer right there.